what I'm about to share with you now, it may sound very odd, but I need to inform you. The following will open you up to black magic. When people think of black magic, they think of some man with a long beard, with potions, screaming weird um, hymns or weird spells with a rope on, you, you get what I'm saying, that Hollywood image that they gave off black magic. Now let me tell you, black magic is more than some warlock making potions and screaming weird hymns onto demons. That happens, but it's more than that. There is one way of thinking, there's one concept that's absolutely popular in the world. Not in the absolute sense, but it's absolutely popular. People really love this idea. People build their lives on this idea. But, but this idea that I'm about to reveal now, it will open you up to black magic spells and voodoo spells and whatever paranormal spell it is. I'm not saying that without this idea, you can't be affected by such stuff. But the dark arts will work perfectly on you without resistance if you have the following mindset or following idea. And that idea is the idea of free will. Yes, I said it. I don't go into theological debates here. With free will, I define the attitude that you can will whatever you will because it's your will. If you have that mindset, I'm telling you, black magic, voodoo spells, all of it can happen to you easily. Why? Because that way of thinking that you can will whatever you will is darkness. So you are in agreement with demons already. Because what you're really saying with the attitude is that you are God. When you will something, you will it. And people just have to take or deal with that will. If you have that attitude, you are in rebellion against Christ. Because he is Lord, you're not. And here's the thing. That will whatever you will attitude is narcissistic. That is the mindset the narcissist has. The sociopath and the psychopath. Common people in general also have this mindset, they can will whatever they will. You don't. The moment you have this mindset, which comes from the idea of free will, I'm telling you, you've opened yourself up to demonic infestation of your affairs. I mean it. Haven't you noticed that, maybe you didn't notice it because you don't do research into this field, but maybe you watch movies and in movies they reveal this or, or you watch you watch shows in the past or you heard pagans talk about it but haven't you noticed it that pagans value free will so much why do they value free will so much isn't the whole purpose of black magic to control someone's will now why do they value people's right to say no if they're operating in powers that overrule people's will to begin with don't you see this contradicts itself? Because look at this. The moment you have faith in your own will, that your own will can save you, you're making your own will a god. And that's an idol. So the moment you rely on your own will and the strength of your own will to, to determine your destiny, to determine your outcomes, you're already operating in a form of witchcraft. I don't say you're a witch, you're not a witch. You're not a warlock, but this whole mentality that you can will whatever you will and that when you don't like someone, you just you don't will that individual or when you are fed up, you're just fed up, the this whole sovereign, I, I, this whole idea that you're sovereign with your will and that you have a right to rely on your will and to operate in it no matter what, it's, there's an expression of witchcraft right over there. So how are you going to overcome black magic against you if you operate in the same mindset of black magic? You get what I'm saying here? But here's another thing. Churches often don't tell you this. They don't. A lot of churches, they promote this whole idea of free will, which is not biblical. This whole willing whatever you will attitude they promote it and they even add the insult to it 
by saying that God himself has to submit to this willing of every will attitude of, of the billions of people to walk the earth. They go so far to even say that Christ is obliged to be limited by your will. Or let me say by your is obliged to give in and submit to your will. They credit mankind, including individual people, with the right to choose evil, with the right to hold on to the negative. They grant license to humankind to say no to reality and to say no to justice. And that even God himself has to bow down to this no. So hold on a minute, if you grant people this right to will against reality, that means that the child molester also has the right to molest a kid because he can will whatever he will. He has a right to say no. That means he has a right to say no against reality and she need to respect their no. I mean, what? Do you see how far this is going? A lot of people don't look at the bigger picture. This whole idea of free will is a dangerous idea. This whole concept is inconsistent with reality. And if you're into science, because you say, I don't trust that Bible thing or about the Holy Spirit, all of that, science itself revealed that free will does not exist. People have the ability to choose. That's right. People can, people have the ability to choose how they relate to what happens to them. But that whole, this whole concept, people can will whatever they will. Science itself does not support it. But pagans support it. So when pagans are deeply involved in supporting something, you need to question it. But now you have a concept that pagans endorse. Remember who pagans serve, to serve the beast, to serve the anti to serve Antichrist. So when people follow Antichrist, endorse something, ask yourself why are they endorsing it? And ask yourself the following also, why do many of those churches endorse what pagans endorse? Shouldn't we agree with Christ? Isn't Christ our Lord, our Master? Then why are we in agreement with Christ's enemies? I'm telling you, look at the bigger picture. You hold on to this free will idea, you are putting yourself in danger. Because look at this this way. Let's say you have a narcissist that wants to trap you in a relationship. What's going to happen? The narcissist is going to act kind towards you and respectful. Why? Because you are conditioned to seek validation from others. So the nurse is going to provide you this supply of validation. And this influences you that you get attached to the nurse's presence. And what happens is that after a while, the narcissist will point the finger to other people's faults. And when you see those faults, if those faults are not in line with your thinking, you become offended. And now that you're offended, you are hurt. You're, you want relief from those hurt feelings even though those hurt feelings come from you being triggered. But now the narcissist is going to ease your wound. And by easing your wound, the narcissist is drawing you closer to him. Or to, because there are also female predators out there. Now what has happened? You will whatever you will, right? It's your life, your privacy, your decisions. You don't have to explain yourself. So you are upset with certain people. You don't like them. You don't want to see them again. And at the same time, you're distracted from noticing that someone has thrown you to him or to her. So now you become attached to that individual. And this is the trap. That individual influences your will like, and turns your will against other people. But because you have this idea that you can will at every will, you're blind from seeing that someone ha has manipulated your will. So now you are in denial. You don't, want, you don't want to admit that this has happened. If this idea that someone has changed your will, it frightens you. So you hold on to your right to will whatever you will. And that's how you remain trapped with a narcissistic individual that's preying on you. And you're not even aware that the individual is a narcissist. After a while, after the honeymoon phase, bam, the narcissist begins to train you. What has happened? It's that idea of free will, which goes against Christ, which even goes against reality and nature itself, is this doctrine of devils that you hold on to that blinded you from seeing what was happening. And because you couldn't see what was happening, predators were enabled to prey on you. And demons could use those predators to put you in danger. 
I hope you see now how serious this defective thinking of free will is. I'm not denying that people have the ability to choose. I'm not saying that you should never allow people to make their decisions on their own. Which, that doesn't really exist because you're always influenced by the environment. But nevertheless, I'm not saying that you should control people's will. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm for people living life in line with Christ. They may make choices that aren't that wise, but they'll outgrow them. I'm not into controlling people. I'm just telling you this whole willing whatever you will attitude, you need to unlearn it and stop granting others a license to will whatever they will. Stop doing that. If you do that, you enable Satan. Because remember, when you tell people that they have a right to will whatever they will, you're denying Christ. And by enabling people in this mindset, you, in, you enable them to enable danger on themselves. Look, I'm not telling you to go into debates and arguments and fights with people. Just don't enable Satan. And that is what a lot of people do. They enable Satan. Look, I made this video to warn you personally about this free will myth that will open yourself up to a lot of danger. A lot of folks, when they realize that something paranormal is happening to them, they either go to paranormal investigators or they go to mediums or to paranormal agents to seek relief from what's happening. Some go to church, but they're not even aware that many of those churches operate in the same paranormal power. They want to get rid of black magic, but the churches they go to for help are operating in black magic. So what do you win over there? Or they go to YouTube to find, find some teacher to validate their, their, their ideas. Look, the way to be protected against black magic and all those stuff is to agree with Christ. Just agree with him. Have him at the center. I'm not saying that you can't be affected by such stuff because such stuff are happening also against believers. We are being persecuted. Remember, nevertheless, in Christ, there is power to overrule and trample upon black magic, fool to hoodoo, juju and all those things. But you have to agree with Christ. You can't have a black magic mentality and defeat black magic. You can't. You can't use violence to defeat violence because you're also left with violence. You can't use evil to defeat evil. You can suppress smaller evil with bigger evil, but you're still in evil. So, that being said, I'm telling you, I agree with Christ and please look beyond. Look beyond your expectations to see whether they are in line with Christ or not. Make sure that your expectations are not... I'm sorry, yes. Make sure that your expectations are not darkness. Make sure that your expectations are not enabling evil spirits. This is something quite serious. I'm telling you, look beyond. I agree with Christ. Be at peace.